December 16th, Yusaka Command, members of Kwajalein's American Legion Post 44 and some of Kwajalein Atoll's RMI leaders took a flight on one of the garrison's Metro turboprops. They headed to the RMI capital of Majuro, where one of the newest American Legion posts, Post 22, was set to be established in downtown Majuro at the Marshall Islands Resort. The guests at the poolside soiree enjoyed the U.S. and RMI national anthems, the presentation of the post's callers, and an invocation by Chaplain Brian Connor. For the life we have today, we thank you for friends. Kwajalein's American Legion Post 44 Commander Dan Farnham was invited to perform the induction ceremony of the post's new officers and members. You will, I know, vindicate the trust that has been reposed in you and fulfill in every way the obligations which that trust entails. Post 22 is now fully in action. Among the VIPs assembled for the event was RMI President David Kabua, who gave a short speech and thanked the Garrison and U.S. Embassy for helping support the Post's establishment. U.S. Ambassador to the RMI, Roxanne Cabral, said that the Embassy's support for the new post was a no-brainer. Over the years, the American Legion has enhanced considerable social change, won hundreds of benefits for veterans and many voices in the Induction ceremony and speeches were followed by live music, a buffet lunch, and of course, some cake to mark the occasion. Christmas in the Marshall Islands is a festive time made for cutting a rug, aka dancing your flip flops off. AFM made it to Ebay Christmas night to check out these performances by dance and singing groups known in Marshallese as Jeptas. Here we go. <laughs>
year, the Kwajalein High School's National Honor Society students decide on a service project to help the community. This year, the NHS decided to collect donations to bring the holidays to the island of Carlos, creating gift bags for the kids as well as family boxes for those living in Carlos. So National Honor Society has, over the past couple of months, been collecting supplies um, to bring family boxes and kids boxes to the island of Carlos. We're doing this to like give back to our community and like this is something bigger than NHS has really ever done before. And so we really we want to expand from Kwajalein and help like the rest of our community through this project. Now this is the first time NHS has done this, but this isn't a new project for the community. Yeah, the first time National Honor Society has done it, but ending 10 years ago, the Ricotta Club used to do it, but um, they used bee boats and that got too dangerous, so it was shut down. And so, yeah, we had to get command approval to start this back up, but we're really glad that we got to do it. Joining us on our trip was Dio Keju, who was our translator as well as our Santa Claus for this trip. Playing like a Santa, because I usually, I, I, I'm part of the exchange program between the teachers on Ebay and Kwajalein, so I got to know them. Marcina kind of expressed the need for someone who can speak Marshallese and play Santa at the same time. So kind of blend between the two. Dio is well known in Carlos, so he was a great choice to join us on our journey. I come here just about every quarter to follow up, like doing math, whatever their needs are, or at least trying to be here every quarter. And these kids come to Ibai a lot, and they exchange, so Ibai is a small community, so when they see me, they say, let's go, they call my name. You know, now that we can, uh, like, travel, uh, if they could they have the formal education, they can practically go anywhere and be comfortable rather than going and like some up with this mostly in the States struggle because they don't know how to speak English and they didn't know how to write or even read so they struggle. But if they have formal education, they can go anywhere. Nowadays they can practically go anywhere in the world. It, it really helps. I think in August, like right at the beginning of the year, we voted on what service project we were going to do. And then um, after we did that, we really had to get the ball rolling because we had to get like command approval. And then we had to start collecting all of this before December so that like we were ready. First, we had to go through command to see if we could even do this project. And then um, once we briefed command and got their approval, um, we set up drop boxes and we were at a lot of events where we collected supplies and uh, monetary donations. Through the supplies we collected, we had to organize all of that and to see like if we had 50 of each thing and then we make community boxes out of all the extras. We also, with the monetary donations, um, the advisors went over to eBuy and bought extra supplies to make up for, like if we had 45 hand sanitizers, to get five more to just even everything out. As you can see, Dio has an infectious positive attitude that brings a smile to everyone. <laughs> it's the kids who like seeing a Marshall and, <laughs> and they know you like what? <laughs> and it's more fun for us all. Yeah, because there's there's like a lot of different things. We have like toilet paper and hand sanitizer and then like a few different bar soaps and um, canned goods and that's all in the family boxes. And then in the kids' bags it's like construction paper and colored pencils and granola bars and like cute stuff. Oh, it's so great, and I'm like, because this hasn't been done in 10 years, and so it's really awesome that like NHS, and especially in my last year here, we're finally able to do this, and it's like something that we plan, or like the chapter plans to continue like for years to come, now that we've got it for the first time, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. Well, hopefully this is the start to a new Kwajalein NHS tradition here in the Marshall Islands. Thank you all for your donations to the holidays on Carlos.
So some of you may have started your New Year's resolution. Here are six tips on how to keep your resolution this year. Tip one, now let's be real. If you set your goal too high, you'll never reach it. So when you're setting your New Year's resolution, be realistic. Tip two, if you just decided to have some resolution last minute, take a step back, come up with a plan of action, break down the process and make smaller goals to lead up to your final goal. Tip three, tell others about your goals so they can help support you or even find someone with similar goals and motivate each other. Tip four, if you're putting in the work to reach your goal, reward yourself some, but don't do anything that contradicts that resolution. That defeats the purpose. Maybe order you a new water bottle use at the gym or something. Tip five, experts say it takes about 21 days for a new activity to become a habit and six months for it to become part of your personality. It won't happen overnight, so be persistent and patient. Tip six, if you fall off the horse, just get back on it. Don't give up just because you've already failed and it's only mid-February. Keep going. Well, that's it. So good luck out there. And remember, set realistic goals. Don't give up and stay motivated. A message from AFN Quadrant.